Hi, I'm Sal Amato. We're still here. I went, it's just like we've been here all night. And we're at uh, EDM America TV on the south side of Chicago where we're getting ready for a battle of the DJs with DJs. Not, not just, you know, guys playing. They're going to be spinning shit. And you're going to see the action live, man. You're going to see their hand action. You're going to see their faces as they work the tables, as they work the CDJs. Everything that goes into the art of DJing, you're going to see this battle of DJs here on EDM America TV. And right now I'm standing here with DJ Unknown. Who's going to be one of the contestants in the battle? DJ, I know how you doing, man. I'm doing good. Doing good, getting ready, you know. Anxious to get on these tables. So hopefully it's soon, you know, so we can show all these people what we do. You know? So how long you been DJing for? Tell me how long you been DJing for. I've been DJing since I was 12 years old. So it's like... It's like about 45, 50 years or 20 years? Well, let's put it like maybe a little bit, like 20-something years. Which was about 110 pounds ago for me. That's cool. Yeah. And maybe a little bit less for me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, um, it's been a while, like 20-something years. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm, be I'm better than anybody, but, you know, we all do our thing. Now, as time has gone by, man, as DJs, so much music has gone by through the years, too. So you've got to keep your ear open, your mind up. What did you start out spinning? When you started spinning, were you spinning disco? Were you spinning funk? Were you spinning it all? Were you playing new way? What were you spinning when you started? You know, when I first started out, it was 90s house. You know, um, 80s, 80s music, you know, like Blondie and all that other stuff. Eventually, disco was in my era when I was in the 70s. I was young, but I started like in the 80s. So 80s music, you know, and uh, after that, it started progressing to different kind of music, you know, and it's still going, you know, where we got all these kinds of sounds coming out, trap music, you know, we got hip hop, not the old hip hop like before, but, you know, we got all different kinds of versions of, you know, tracks, you know, music. So I mix, I, I try to mix everything, you know, as best as I could. Like I said, I'm not better than anybody. I'm not saying I am better than anybody. I just love doing it for the music, that I love music, you know, and I love spinning it, so. But you can hold your own. I can say that, yeah. There you go. You know, it's interesting you talk hip hop because the thing about EDM is that it's so inclusive, um, especially now when you, when you hear what's going on with Steve Aoki and Linkin Park. And then you think back even in the 90s, when uh, Muggs was on tour with Rage Against the Machine, right. how electronics is really inclusive, and now you see how trap is attracting a lot of hip hop guys and a lot of producers. Uh, everybody's a producer now because you got SoundCloud and MixCloud, so you remix a record and you say, "Hey, I'm a producer." But it's interesting when you mention hip hop, you know, you're spinning hip, you're spinning hip hop, you're working a club and you're doing hip hop. How hip hop is really becoming part of an electronic scene because not let me really think about it. Hip hop was always created with electronics, anyways. Back in the day, other than the fat boys doing it with their sound, with their mouth, all that shit was all lin drums and drum machines yeah. back then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it sure was. Yeah, you know, now it's a little bit more different. You know, more instruments, more sounds. You know, synthesizers and all these stuff they got. So you know, it's a little bit more upgraded than before, but it's still all the same thing. I think you know. So what are you gonna be spending on tonight? What's your, what's your drug of choice here tonight? Well, I started with the, with the 1200. You know, but eventually I upgraded to, to the CD players, which is the CDJs, you know, 1000, whatever, you know. Um, I'm trying to upgrade to the Serato, you know, but times are, you know, they're hard. We need a lottery ticket, man. Anybody, if you got a winning lottery ticket, you can split it with us. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I'm going to spin with the CDJs and um, I'm going to spin, you know, whatever comes to my mind. I don't put a program together, you know, whatever just comes to my mind. Just let it roll, man. It's, and that's the vibe, and that's what an artist does. You, you're feeling it, man. You feel it, and you're in your zone too, right, man? I mean, you get in your zone, man. You're like, when I get into my zone, I, you know, I don't, want, I don't like nobody bothering me, you know, coming up to the DJ booth and put this on, put that on, you know, because it gets you out of your zone, and then that's when you start messing up. Well, when you're doing a gig, especially if you're hired for a gig, you're hired because of what you do. Oh, yeah. When you walk into a gig and you say, "Okay, I want you to do this," it's like, okay, well then, why did you call me? Why did you pay me? Well, I mean. You know what I do. So you want me to play Metallica and Pantera, and you want me to follow it up with Ignition by R. Kelly? Okay, how do you want that to go? Right, right, yeah. I mean, uh, mobile mobile DJing is different than club DJing, you know? I mean, mobile DJing, you, they can ask you whatever you want. they want to hear, and you can throw it on there, you know? But when it comes to the club, you come to the club, it's not a jukebox. Different events, different purposes. Exactly, you know, and, you know, but I mean, you try to please the crowd. That's, the, that's what we do, you know? I mean, some of us DJs do, you know? I put the music that they want to hear. Now, as I've asked everybody else, we all have a little guilty pleasure that we listen to. I mean, in reality, in, honor, in all honesty, 
I'm a disco freak and an R&B freak. I mean, if it's Tower and Power, Earth, Wind & Fire, Isley Brothers, Curtis Mayfield, I'm there. That's my favorite shit. I love everything, but my soul and my heart is always in blues and R&B, and I mean blues. You know, I mean, a big freak for blues, disco, which are weird combinations. You know? What's your guilty pleasure, man? What are you into that nobody would ever think? My thing is trance music. I love trance music. Armin Van Buren, Tiesto, you know, um, Ferry Corson, all these other DJs, you know, that I've seen. That's my motivation there, you know. I love spinning trance, you know, house, you know, from downtown, you know, all the new stuff. You know, but mostly it's trends. You know, it's interesting because we have an industry an interview that I did with Ferry Corston. Spring Awakening Music Festival last year, I interviewed Ferry. And trance, you know, when you're listening to trance, if you remember, they used to call it Dream House yes. in the late 90s before it became trance. Yeah. And trance became popular early 2000s when we came out of Dream House to Progressive House. Progressive House yeah. And then it'd be, you know, and now... Now, look at enough, Barry and, and even Marcus Schultz. Yeah. Like they're, they're playing trance. They're still doing trance. But they call it but different now, I think. They're playing progressive house. Progressive house, that's, that's what they call it, yeah. It's like we've come full circle on that. Yeah. Right, I'm here with DJ Unknown. I'm Sal Amato with EDM America TV. We had a battle of the DJs here in the south side of Chicago. We're about to do it right.